welcome to another digital edition on uh, India Today's Bulletin for Omicron, where we track uh, all that's been going on uh, with the Omicron situation in India. I'm Milan Sharma. Let's look at the latest tally of Omicron and COVID in the country today. With more than 3,000 Omicron cases, the tally of uh, the cases has surged. Maharashtra, once again, is leading the tally with the Delhi and uh, other states like uh, Kerala, Tamil Nadu, as well as Rajasthan and Gujarat that are also showing large amount of Omicron infections. About uh, 1,199 people have recovered. But the number of cases in India have also surged as we have crossed the 1 lakh mark. India records more than 1 lakh 17 thousand and hundred new cases in the last 24 hours the daily positivity rate has now also gone up to 7.74 percent now even as delhi is ready to impose a weekend curfew starting 5 uh, 10 p.m on friday to 5 a.m uh, on a monday but uh, cases have been surging not just in delhi but across the country my colleagues bring you this ground report from across various cities in India. Listen in. The national capital is witnessing constant spike in the COVID-19 cases. According to the January 6th COVID bulletin of the national capital, at least 15,000 fresh cases were recorded in Delhi within 24 hours. And the positivity rate has now breezed 15% mark. That means every 100 person that are being tested in Delhi, 15 are turning out to be COVID positive. Along with this, another matter of concern for the Delhi Wallas is that in the past week, different government hospitals of Delhi are witnessing a situation where health workers, including doctors and nurses, have started to turn positive, And that number is at least uh, around 100. And in order to stop the spread of the COVID-19, the Delhi government has already imposed curf night curfew and weekend curfew. Today, all non-essential pub public movement will be restricted from 10 p.m. And this restriction will remain till 5 a.m. on Monday. However, those working with the essential services department and essential services and establishments like uh, you know, medical stores will be allowed to operate. The metros will operate. However, the duration of the metros will be, you know, slowed down. With video journalist Ashwini Helen, this is Amit Bhardwaj for India Today from Delhi. The number of COVID cases continues to increase in Uttar Pradesh with more than double the rate. And within 24 hours, 3,121 cases has been reported with active cases gone up to 8,224. There is a major concern in the big cities like Ghaziabad, uh, Noida and Lucknow where the number of cases are rapidly increasing. Talking about the numbers, uh, Ghaziabad is currently uh, the active cases in last 24 hours has been uh, 382, Noida 600 and Lucknow 408. At the same time, the government had issued the guidelines, restrictions have been imposed in all those districts where the active cases are more than 1,000. It includes a uh, night curfew duration from 10 uh, in the night to 6 a.m. in the morning. Other than that, swimming pools, water park and gyms will be closed and the restaurant will, can only function with 50% capacity. The major concern for Uttar Pradesh is the upcoming assembly polls, which could be a, a major uh, hotspot to, uh, for the spread of this virus. For that, the government is making sure that the protocol is followed properly and strict guidelines have been issued. But the numbers are alarming because the rate of increase has doubled and also at the time the number of cases which was reported in 24 hours were last reported in May 2021. It looks like that the COVID threat is again on Uttar Pradesh with the cases rapidly increasing, putting a major challenge in front of the administration. In Lucknow with cameraman Neeraj Kumar Abhishek Mishra for India Today. The COVID situation in West Bengal continues to remain grim. The state has recorded more than 15,000 fresh cases in the last 24 hours. And most of these cases are coming from capital Kolkata and adjoining areas. Kolkata itself has recorded more than 6,500 cases in the past 24 hours. What's worrying, of course, is the very high rate of positivity. West Bengal at this point in time has the highest rate of positivity at 25%. And that seems to be the main cause of concern. Chief Minister Mamta Banerjee, of course, held an emergency meeting yesterday and she has appealed to people to be very, very cautious and uh, wear the mask. However, 
The concern, of course, is that not just the common masses, the common people, but even frontline workers, especially doctors, medical staff at government hospitals are falling prey to COVID. And there is a question mark on how much of this will have an impact on the healthcare system of the state. Meanwhile, uh, elections are due in several corporations, municipal corporations, only five municipal corporations on January 22nd. The principal opposition party, BJP, the left, we have all now requested the government uh, to postpone these elections. PILs have been uh, put before the Calcutta High Court and the Calcutta High Court will have to take a decision on that. Uh, there is also a request and a PIL before the Calcutta High Court to not allow the Ganga Sagar Mela this time where lakhs of devotees converge every year. Uh, the state government, of course, has now postponed the Calcutta Film Festival that was scheduled for this week. However, the situation on ground remains very, very grim at this point in time, with experts now saying that this is a curve on the rise, and over the next few weeks, it will be very interesting to see where the COVID situation heads here in West Bengal. The COVID situation in Karnataka seems to be deteriorating every day. The positivity rate in Bengaluru has shot up to 7.5%, whereas the positivity rate in the overall in the state is risen up to 3.95%. Now, across the state, cases are increasing, while most of the cases are concentrated in Bengaluru. Karnataka recorded over 5,000 cases in the last 24 hours, with more than 4,000 cases recorded in Bengaluru alone. Now, Omicron cases are also risen in the case, with more than 200 cases that have been registered so far. Now, Karnataka government has uh, said that they will be following weekend curfew, which will come into effect from uh, around 8 p.m. on Friday to, and which will end on uh, 5 a.m. on Sunday. Now, with all these measures, the Karnataka government hopes to ensure and uh, constrain the rise of Omicron and COVID cases in the state. With video journalist Shivamurthy, this is Karthik for India Today. COVID-19 situation in the state of Tamil Nadu is turning serious as the case numbers daily positivity rate is increasing magnanimously. In fact, uh, we are at one location in Bakum where the state has indeed uh, uh, one of the uh, uh, trade centers here as a preparation. You could see the number of beds at this point. This particular trade center called Nandabakam Trade Center alone in Chennai is going to house uh, nearly 900 beds because the issue here seems to be Chennai is very badly affected. And another serious issue that the state has to deal currently is the Pongal celebrations, which also the state has decided to postpone everywhere. Only 50% occupancy is allowed, and be it gym, be it malls, be it shops. This way, the state has brought in new curbs to make sure that the uh, uh, infection could be controlled. However, for now, it looks like the infection is spreading rapidly because if we take day by day statistics, a minimum of 1,500 cases are being added every day, while the patients that are being discharged is only. 700 plus. However, the, chief, the health department is pretty sure that if the people follow standard operating procedures, if they mask up, all this could be rectified. With British Daniel, Pramod Madhav, for India Today. Now, even as we're looking at a steep rise in cases across India, many projections have been made on when India will witness a peak of this third wave. My colleague Sneha Mordani spoke with Professor Manindra Agawal of the IIT Kanpur and he said that in cities uh, such as Delhi and Mumbai, we could see a peak in as early as 10 days. Listen in. Professor Manindra Agarwal, thank you so much for your time here. I want to begin by asking you that more than 1 lakh cases are being reported in India already. Uh, there is a visible surge. Uh, it's for all of us to see and a lot has been said about how this could just be uh, are not very accurate numbers, so the actual numbers could be much more. Having said that, if more than one lakh cases is not our peak, what really would be India's peak? What would be the scenario in major cities in weeks and days to come? What are your findings? Do share with us. Yeah, good morning, everyone. Uh, firstly, uh, the data coming about Omicron cases in India is still in very early days because even in Mumbai where it started perhaps the earliest, we only have about 10 days data. So uh, we have a model which looks at the data and then estimates the parameter values and then computes a prediction based on that. So for most of the places, our model is doesn't have enough data to be able to make such projections. Mm. Having said that, we have done some preliminary analysis and what this indicates is the following. 
that uh, in cities like uh, delhi mumbai where the numbers are been rising very fast for past week or so they will continue to rise very sharply with the peak estimated somewhere around middle of this month that is in about week 10 days from now uh, okay. and this is a typical characteristic of any wave that rises very fast that it peaks fast and again comes down quite fast okay for india we are still a little bit in the dark because as i said then insufficient data is available at present but uh, very preliminary estimates indicate that the peak will be somewhere between 4 to 8 lakh cases per day somewhere around for the entire the country month, for the entire country somewhere around end of this month give or take a week well, after vaccinations began for teenagers of the age of 15 to 18 years, feedback was received that certain vaccination centers are telling these teenagers to take paracetamol tablets after getting vaccinated with Covaxin. The prescription is being given to take three such paracetamol tablets in a day. Covaxin maker Bharat Biotech has issued a statement and said that uh, no such prescription is necessary after taking Covaxin because uh, the side effects, if at all, are very mild and localized in nature and they do not require any medication. If in case the teenager or child requires any medication, it must be done only on the doctor's prescription. Otherwise, there is no need to take any fever medication at all after being vaccinated with Covaxin. That has been the statement from the company itself. Now let's take a look at the Omicron situation across the world with the record rise in daily cases that are being reported from several countries in the Europe at the moment. Omicron variant continues to spread. We are looking at a case rise in France that's recording more than 3,32,000 cases. Portugal, 39,000 cases. Turkey, 66,000 cases. Italy, more than 1,89,000 cases. Sweden at 17,320. The Netherlands is looking at uh, 24,000 cases, while Israel is reporting more than 11,000 cases in a day. And that is a big rise for all these countries. Even as uh, cases continue, pre-departure tests for people travelling to the England have been scrapped. Prime Minister Boris Johnson announced that the requirement would be lifted from 4 a.m. on Friday, along with the need for travellers to self-isolate on arrival till they receive a negative RT-PCR result. While Omicron does appear to be less severe compared to Delta, especially in those vaccinated, it does not mean it should be categorised as mild. Just like previous variants, Omicron is hospitalizing people and it's killing people. In fact, the tsunami of cases is so huge and quick that it is overwhelming health systems around the world. Well, that's all we have for you in this edition of India Today's Digital Bulletin. Remember to mask up in public places and do not venture out unless necessary. Avoid all non-essential travel at the moment. Thank you for watching and stay tuned to indiatoday.in.